keep focus on the breath in and of itself. Ardent, alert, mindful. Putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. That's the formula. What it means is you put aside all your concerns about the world right now. You hear the world is anything from the, starting from the skin around your body on out. Except for the cocoon of breath energy you may have around the body. Otherwise, you want to be with the breath as it is right here, right now. Try not to let anything else interfere. So remember that. That's what it means to be mindful. Be alert to what you're doing, and be ardent in doing it well. Give yourself totally to the breath right now. Because no matter how much the world needs to be straightened out, there's a lot that needs to be straightened out inside. And it's amazing not only how people in general resist that, but even people who claim to be Buddhists. But that's their business. Our business is what we're doing right now, right here. Learning to be comfortable in our own skins. Because if we can't be comfortable here, we're not going to find any comfort outside. This is one of the reasons why we work with the breath, because the breath is the element or the property of the body that's most amenable to our adjusting. Now, one of the most important skills in working with the breath is the adjusting. And John Lee tells the story of an old monk who had been doing breath meditation for 40 years, ever since the time of John Munn. And he says that he didn't see it go anywhere. And then John Lee's analysis of the problem was that he hadn't worked with the breath at all. He just let it go in, out, in, out, in, out. He didn't stop to think that there are lots of different ways the breath can come in, and lots of different ways it can go out, and lots of different ways it can circulate around the body. So how do you adjust the breath? Well, for one thing, you don't put a lot of pressure on it. It's often the case that when you encounter a blockage in the body, the problem is not that something is blocking you, the problem is that you're pushing. Think of the breath as being diffuse. You can go through things and around things. You can go in any direction. And so if you feel a sense of blockage, so you, well, think of it, the breath going around it or penetrating it. The picture you hold in mind of the breath will play a huge role in this. So when you're adjusting the breath, you're also adjusting your perceptions. And it's good to have as diffuse an image in your mind of the body as a whole anyhow. Otherwise you find yourself tensing up here, tensing up there to have a sensation that corresponds to what you think the body should be, where the different parts of the body should be. And that doesn't help anything. Think of things being more diffuse. And then notice, as you breathe in, what direction does the breath go in the body? 
Are you pulling it up? What does that do? Is it settling down too much? What does that do? There are times when you have to think of it going up for a while, or other times when you have to think of it going down for a while to bring things back into balance. And when you have a sensation of blockage, is it really in the spot where the mind tells you it is? One thing I found helpful is to ask yourself if the, the mind says that this particular knot of tension is in the front, what if it's actually an extension of a knot in tension that's in the back? Hold that perception in mind for a while and see what it does. And then try vice versa. If there's something the mind says is in the back, we'll focus on perceiving that particular knot of tension as something related to the front. That might help it dissolve. Because remember, when the Buddha describes breath meditation, it's an opportunity to learn about fabrication, bodily, verbal, mental. We are not, not only to see how the breath goes, but also how you talk to yourself and the perceptions and feelings that get involved. And you play around with them. And you'll find that an important part of it is learning how to talk to yourself. And John Lee singles this out as the big culprit in the different kinds of fabrication. The kind of conversations you tend to hold in the mind will then get carried over into your engagement with the breath. And if you tend to talk to yourself in unskillful ways, you'll be, on, you'll be talking to yourself about the breath in unskillful ways. So you're trying to put, pick up some good habits in how you talk to yourself. Remind yourself that the breath is your friend. It's the force of life. It's kept you going this long. You don't know how much longer it's going to keep the body going, but you've got it right now, and you can play with it. And you can use it as an example of how to test your perceptions. Sometimes the effects will be quicker than you might imagine. Just ask yourself, what if the breath goes up and the breath will start going up? What if it goes down and it starts going down? Now, if you're not sure of your perceptions, you drop it. The trick then is to learn how to just hold on to the perception. and see how far you can carry through with it, and see if it has a good effect on the breath or not. If it doesn't, you can change. This, of course, requires some imagination. When John Lee gives us some pointers, you notice as you look through his different instructions on breath meditation, he's got the guides there in Method 1 Method 2. You look through his Dharma talks, he's got other ways of playing with the breath that he doesn't mention in the guides. And you wonder how, how many other ways he would have found of playing with the breath if he'd lived longer. Well, you're here, you're alive, you can play. You can think of the breath energy coming in to the body from all directions all at once. And John Fuhr at one time recommended a perception where you have this cord of energy running down through the middle of the torso. And as you breathe in, the breath comes into that cord from all directions, and it goes out from that cord in all directions. You just hold that perception in mind. You don't have to do anything to force the breath that way. Just hold the perception in mind, and it will change the way you feel the breath. He would also talk about the breath and the bones.
one of his students was commenting one time how he, he was on a bus ride and he didn't have trouble. He'd had trouble getting to stay with the breath, and for some reason that day everything seemed to click. And as he later told to John Fuang, the breath became delicious. So from that point on, every time a John Fuang taught that guy meditation, he said, okay, get so that your breath is delicious again. So what would your delicious breath be like? What would taste really good? What would sound really good? What would smell really good in terms of the breathing? Try to expand your repertoire of new ways of thinking about the breath. And some of your experiments may not work, but you never know until you try. So if you're meditating here, you find yourself getting stuck in old ruts, dealing with the breath in old ways and getting the same old resu results, remind yourself you can change. You can improve your relationship with the breath. By allowing yourself to imagine it. I know some people who object to using imagination in meditation. They say, aren't we here just to see reality as it is? Well, one of the features of reality as it is is your imagination plays a huge role in shaping it. And the extent of your imagination it can close things off, it can open things up. It's like the programs they had on those satellites, the ones that were sending back data that there was this huge ozone hole over Antarctica. Well, the programs had been written in such a way that if data like that came in, it was automatically rejected. And so for years they were getting the data, but it was being thrown out. It was because the programmers didn't have it in their imagination that there could be such thing as an ozone hole. So sometimes it's, it's through your imagination that you get to reality. After all, we have to imagine the world is round. We haven't seen that it's round. We've seen pictures, but who knows if those pictures are true. But they found by imagining the world is round, they could shorten the distance between, say, flying from Los Angeles to Paris. If the world were flat, you'd have to go one way. If the world is round, you can go further north and save a lot of time, which makes sense only if the world really were round. So try to expand your imagination about what the breath can do, how you can relate to the breath. what an in-breath should feel like, what an out-breath should feel like. And you begin to realize that what John Lee had to say about evaluation, that the adjusting of the breath is really true. It's the discernment faculty in your concentration. You begin to see fabrication. You begin to see how it can be used to energize the body, used to calm the body. Energize the mind, calm the mind. And you realize that you've got a lot more leeway here in the present moment for making this a much better place to be. So allow yourself to imagine that things can go well inside the body. And see what that active imagination can open up.